going on everyone it's alex here from alex physio so today i'm going to be chatting about why i decided to become a physiotherapist welcome for those of you who are new to my channel my name is alexander kravich i'm a physiotherapist in vancouver british columbia and today i'm going to be chatting with you a little bit about why I became a physiotherapist. Basically, it all started when I was in high school, uh, in my last year of high school. I was uh, playing basketball pretty competitively and I was hoping to be able to play at the next level. And I started the season pretty well. I was um, averaging over 30 points a game. Um, everything was looking good uh, the summer before. I was training really hard and um, I was starting to get noticed a little bit more um, from college coaches. So I thought my last year would kind of be that year where it all kind of comes to fruition. Uh, however, I had a really bad uh, ankle sprain. I had a high ankle sprain, which I didn't know of at that time. I thought it was just a regular ankle sprain. However, I continued to play through it and push through it. And I repeatedly would continue to have the same injury over and over again. And then I ended up having a high ankle sprain on the other leg, which again, I didn't know at that time. I didn't really know what the prognosis is or timeline for recovery. I just kind of wanted to play so bad that I would basically be playing um, and I would be limping throughout the game because I it was just so much pain. And it was something I didn't really know what was going on because I just thought it would be something that would get better. But I knew I needed to play um, in order to maximize the chances for me to be able to play at the next level. And uh, basically, the season didn't end up turning out the way that I wanted it to turn out. Uh, I ended up playing a few more games, but I was playing at maybe 50 or 60 percent of my capacity because again I was basically just limping and just shooting threes um, and playing pretty half-assed defense because I, I couldn't move as well as I, I, I thought I would be able to. And I remember trying different strategies during that time, heat, cold, um, different exercises or, or things that I just found on, on the internet at that time. This would have been over 10 years ago and um, I remember going to physiotherapy once eventually because it was just getting to the point where I needed help I didn't really know what physiotherapy was or what it entailed. Um, however, I went to see a physio at one of the sports medicine clinics. And one of the main reasons why I didn't go to physio before is just I thought I could heal it or I could treat it on my own. Um, it was obviously not affordable for me at that time and for my family at the time. So I just, I, I, it wasn't really an option. But I ended up finally going to a visit and the physio assessed me and he did something that changed my symptoms right away and I didn't really know what he was doing but he basically taped around my lower shin bone um, where the syndesmosis is so high ankle sprain when I learned after the fact when I when I got into physio school and when I was kind of studying on this a high ankle sprain is basically there's a there's an injury to the syndesmosis and the syndesmosis is basically and the ligaments that are higher than than where your ankle is there's some uh, ligaments that uh, and the syndesmosis is basically a connective tissue that attaches the tibia and the fibula together and, and, and creates a, a bit of that bond in between the two. And when there's a high ankle sprain, you injure the ligaments around that area and also the syndesmosis. So there's a, there's a bit of a splain that happens with the, um, with the tibia and fibula. And so what he did was he wrapped the tape around that area to kind of create a little bit more support for me. And I, and I noticed that when he when he taped that around, I was feeling great. I had no symptoms. And I didn't know this at the time, but I didn't go for further appointments because I just assumed that, you know, this was okay. This is all I needed. Just tape it up and it should be good to go. Uh, how, and I didn't go to any more because I was, yeah, because of primarily because of affordability and also just because, I don't know, looking back at it, I should have, but just in that moment, I didn't. But regardless, the fact that he was able to assess my ankle and be able to give me something, just even if it was temporary, to kind of help with the pain in that moment, to see that there were symptoms that um, were modifiable. It showed me a lot about what the power of a physiotherapist can do. And that actually, even though I, I, I still didn't end up getting to the recovery that I wanted to get, I knew it was, or I, I knew a large part of it that played a role was just in my, in me not going for for more appointments. Me just went to the initial assessment getting some temporary relief and then me thinking that that's that's all there is to it um, however that was the moment where I started to think about physiotherapy more was just that experience for that one visit you know you spend that 45 minutes to an hour with the physio they're asking you lots of questions they're doing lots of tests 
that one-on-one -on -one time uh, was just something that I felt very was very valuable to me in that stage of my life. And even though I didn't end up going to play at the level that I wanted to play at or I felt that I could play at at that time, it still kind of stuck to me as I was going through my undergraduate years. And I did my undergraduate degree in kinesiology. And the main reason for that was basically because my brother went into kinesiology a few years ahead of me and that he told me about it. And I thought, okay, you know, combines anatomy, the human body, um, sports, and helping people. So I thought that would be a good place to start. I didn't really know too much about how physiotherapy works from there and, and how the process of becoming a physiotherapist would be from there, but I know that they're kind of related. So once I was in my second year of university, I started narrowing down the tunnel I wanted to go to uh, in terms of the career path. It was either become a doctor or become a, a physiotherapist. And uh, my skewed experience just on the healthcare system was when I looked at how I felt after the two between going to a family doctor's office versus going to a physiotherapist, I felt that the value that the physiotherapist provided was more immense to me because I was able to share my story. Um, I had a thorough assessment. I had somebody who listened to me, who spent that time with me, that I just didn't have that experience in, on the family physician side and my experience on the, the doctor's uh, realm of things as well. But obviously now I know much more that, you know, doctors isn't just limited to family physicians. There's many other subspecialties that you can go to in addition to the fact that, you know, that's just the system that it's in. It's no family doctor's fault of why that kind of skewed me away from that career. It's just that's how the system is where they can only see, you know, or they can only spend X amount of time with you because of the volume of physicians caseload, especially in Canada. So with that being said, I focused my efforts on physiotherapy and becoming a physiotherapist. I learned later on about, you know, it's a two-year program, two-year master's program after you finish your four years, at least in Canada. And, uh, you know, I took all the necessary courses. I worked really hard on my, um, improving my average, my grade point average, and worked in some volunteer opportunities. And I learned that physiotherapy wasn't just uh, somebody who works with athletes or, or people who have, you know, ankle sprains or musculoskeletal injuries. I learned that it's a lot more than that. It can include people with neurological conditions, people with uh, comorbidities. You can work in, you know, your sports medicine clinic. You can just work in a regular clinic. You can work in a hospital on the inpatient, outpatient side. You can work in a, as part of a family health team. You can uh, work amongst different providers. You can work public, private. Um, just you graduate as a generalist and you're able to go in so many different domains. And I like that aspect because volunteering when I was a uh, kinesiology student it allowed me to kind of appreciate to an extent that it is more than just uh, treating ankle sprains and you know you you play a significant role in somebody's life and in the, the, the physical health side of things which obviously play a role in an individual's mental health emotional health and it all kind of ties down to how I was feeling around that time in high school in my last year you know, how this injury doesn't just affect your physical mobility, you know, difficulty with walking, running, jumping, all the basketball side of things, but also just my mental health was struggling as well. I was, you know, I was, I wasn't formally diagnosed, but I was, I was going through a lot of things because I had all these high hopes and high expectations of myself that I wanted to be able to, you know, play at the next level, like my brother, um, my older brother who played and, and that was kind of my inspiration. I wanted to get to that level as well myself and and not being able to achieve that in that time really brought me down and and I really felt like this injury affected not only my physical health but my mental health my emotional health I was very distant from a lot of people at school and my friends and family and I was just kind of dealing with it alone and and I realized just the impact of having pain and having an injury it doesn't even have to be a musculoskeletal injury or just a as a as an overall health condition when, when something affects your your mobility and your quality of life and you know you go from being able to walk run jump do your activities even you know go up and down stairs you know doing chores or uh, walking getting out of bed when all those things become calculated and labored you realize how important that is to have while you still have it and you realize how much you take that for granted uh, when you do have an injury or, or when you are struggling with pain. And the other thing was just how difficult it was to, you know, try to explain that to other people because, you you know, your your circle when I was playing, my coaches, my 
my teammates, it was all just, you know, how aren't you getting better? It's just an ankle sprain, you know, just tough it out, you know, no pain, no gain. You should be able to work through this. And what they didn't know and what I didn't know is that high ankle sprains can take at least a few months to get better. It's not a typical ankle sprain where you injure the outer ankles, which can tend to get better within a few days to a few weeks, depending on obviously the severity. But a high ankle sprain has a much longer and a much poorer prognosis because it's much less common compared to the other injuries. And the, the type of injury that happens in those impacts just can affect the overall recovery much more than just a regular ankle sprain. So here I am thinking I should be better in a few days, but it was, you know, several weeks, several months until I actually started to, to get to the point where I thought that I could actually play at 90 to 100%. So that whole experience just in my last year of school really taught me and showed me the impact that a physiotherapist can have on somebody's life because of the fact that, you know, you don't have to be an athlete. You can just be somebody who has pain and affects their day-to-day -day activities or their ability to live their life. And being able to play a role in somebody's life to help them decrease their pain, return them back to the activities, that I felt was more valuable to me and being able to use the human body and anatomy and exercises and movement to, to get people better was, was, was something that was very powerful for me and very important to me. And I learned that as I continued to get older and as I continued to go through my undergraduate years and into my physio years. And once I started working, I, you know, I was working in a bunch of different domains and different capacities, just how important that lifestyle and, and how important quality of life is to individuals who have pain. So the reason basically why I became a physio was that last year of school, high school, when I had an injury myself, a severe injury that affected the, the overall trajectory of my life and what I had planned and the fact that that one time that I had with the physiotherapist, the one hour, it opened up the door to me in terms of pain and just understanding pain and looking at pain and seeing that my role in being able to spend 30 to an hour, 30 minutes to an hour with somebody can really impact their outlook on their condition and their outlook on their pain, teach them things about the human body and about their pain and about movement in general and how it can be helpful. In addition to all the different uh, mo modalities and different treatment options that can be done to complement pain and education and reassurance, that solidified that you know, this is something that I want to be involved in. Went between the doctor and the physio and ultimately the physio path ended up being the path I chose because of those reasons I mentioned, just with regards to having more time with patients, being able to go through a comprehensive assessment and, and using exercise as medicine to help people get better and help them get back to their day-to-day -day activities and to their sport. There you have it. I shared a personal story with regards to why I became a physiotherapist and some of the factors that played a role in my life when I was younger. Hopefully you found some value in it. Uh, if you have any questions about physiotherapy or becoming a physiotherapist in Canada, feel free to send me a message down below or comment below. There's so much information out there with regards to what's available and, and how to get through the stages, but I really found that for me, you know, being able to use exercise as medicine, help people with their pain and help them get back to uh, their day-to-day -day life that they were at before they had pain or the injury was something that I, is something that I hold very dearly. And I try to help as many people as possible. And hopefully I can help you. Hopefully I, I inspired you. If, if you're somebody that's looking into different careers that, you know, physiotherapy, obviously, like with any profession, there's some drawbacks, but you know, I'm happy that I ended up choosing this route. Hopefully you found value in this video. Uh, if you did, please feel free to check out some of my other videos on uh, various physio exercise medical related topics. I have over 450 videos. And if you still find value, please consider subscribing to my channel. It really allows my channel to grow and allows me to reach a wider audience. Until then, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.